But as soon as I hit the snooze button, I could hear my mother scream. Mariam, you sleepy head, it's time to wake up. But this made no difference to me as I chose to continue with my sleep. Five minutes later, I could hear my mother scream again. This time, even louder. Mariam, I know you have heard me. Get up right now or else. Or else, the next thing I knew she would do is come to my room and spill a glass of cold water on me. And so, this left me with no choice but to wake up. Basically, I had my MCAT exam that day. That is, Medical Colleges Admissions Test. Now, like every DC parent, my parents also thought that there were only two professions in this world. A, doctor. B, engineer. And considering that I was a girl, this decision became even easier. So I was told that my grandfather had this dream of making one of his daughters a doctor. But unfortunately, he was on unknown, mysterious reasons. He could not fulfill his dream, so then I was chosen to do so. And so, today was the day when it will be decided that will I be able to fulfill his dreams by securing a seat on marriage in a government medical college and be ultimately titled as the first doctor of my entire family? Or will I be called a rebel and be referred to as a complete failure for the rest of my life? Yes, 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 fellow Toastmasters and guests, the choice was tough. And so, was the competition. 700 seats against 7,000 aspirants. And so, today was the big day or say, the doomsday, for which I was obviously stressed, very, very stressed, because I was carrying the burden of expectations of not just my parents or my grandparents, but also of relatives I barely even knew. So that day, after finally waking up from a peaceful and calm sleep, <clears throat> I took my breakfast. And guess what did I have for my breakfast? Two Red Bulls. Why? Because Red Bull gives you wins. And that is exactly what I needed that day. Also, I took three Panadols. Because like every other Pakistani, I had the strong belief that Panadol was the ultimate solution to all my problems. So when I started feeling depressed and anxious, I knew Panadol was the only cure. It was 8.30 a.m. I quickly got ready, packed all my stationery, and decided to leave for my exam center, which was Ennity University. But only one and a half hour later, all hell was about to break loose. By 9 a.m., I was sitting inside the examination hall at my designated seat. And as I looked around and saw her candidates, I could see some were searching for their seats, some were extremely tensed, some could be seen chanting a few prayers, but some were busy secretly talking to their friends. I observed that every space had a completely different story to tell, a story about their struggles and hardships, about the sleepless nights and tiring days, about the blood and sweat they had put in, after which they were all finally here today. And today, this day would mark the end of their stories. And this was something I was curious about, that how many sad and happy endings would I get to witness today. It was 10 a.m. The question booklets were distributed, and the two-hour exam had officially started. But as soon as I unsealed that question booklet, there was an abrupt onset of fear and discomfort. I started trembling. My heartbeat accelerated. And I was sweating, sweating profusely. Pelotos, masters, and guests, I was going through a panic attack right at the beginning of the most important exam of my life. I suddenly started hearing some strange voices. No, Maria, you will never be able to do this. You are a failure. You're hopeless. Oh, you are a disgrace. For a few minutes, I was numb. Completely numb. I 
then tried to muster the courage to look around, but couldn't. I was suffering a blackout until I saw drops of water falling onto my question booklet. Oh my, they weren't drops of water, they were my tears. I was crying, crying out of frustration and agony, crying out my state of helplessness. But fellow ghost masters and guests, deep down, deep down inside my heart, I knew that finding my life was not the solution. All of this was simply the consequence of that fear and pressure that I deliberately inflicted upon myself. At this point, at this moment in my life, I could not give up. I could not give up because I was scared of something or because I couldn't keep control over my nerves. And there would surely be something, something that I could do about it. So with a positive outlook, I tried to pacify myself. I closed my eyes and started meditating. And this is how, within a few minutes, I finally managed to regain my composure. With renewed energy and vigor, I then attempted my exam. And yes, today, here, standing in front of you all, I can proudly say that I did give it my best shot. And all of my efforts were finally paid off when I was admitted into my dream medical college. Fellow those masters and guests, who sum up, I'd like to say that that day, that exam, did not just help me secure a seat in a government medical college, but also instilled in me the ability to confront my fears and fight them back with valor and courage. And just as Nelson Mandela once said, and I quote, I learned that courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. Over to the contest.